Hi guys, let's look into the basic overview of Maven. As we already covered, uh, what this pictorial representation speaks about Maven. So, this is a form, is a basic configuration file that is available with Maven, which reads through this file and sets up the project based on this file, reading through the build profiles that are available as a part of this, uh, this configuration file. So, this is a basic overview of Maven. Let's uh, get into the concepts that we are covering as we had already discussed and look at them in detail, look after them in detail. So basically we'll be covering up the basic introduction and then we'll go into uh, what is the basic project structure and why we require basic project structure for building up any project and what is the tool that is or the plugin that is available in Maven that is used to define the project structure. And then uh, we'll be looking at what uh, is a Maven tool and what basically it does. And, uh, what is an artifact and what is a group ID in Maven and the naming conventions used for defining them and then following up with Maven profiles uh, and uh, what are the basic profiles that are not about and then we'll follow up with what the what the purpose of the form file as you already discussed this is used for configuring it's just a configuration file that is available uh, for the build automation and then uh, what is the Maven dependency and how to download the dependencies, how to configure the dependencies. And then we'll look into, we'll look at the build life cycles. What are the uh, life cycles that are available in Maven? What are the phases that are available in Maven? What are the goals that comes with each and every phase? And then we'll look at the Maven plugins. What are the plugin and what are the Maven plugin used for? And what are the different plugins available? Like a Maven Showfire plugin, Maven Failsafe plugin, Maven Compiler plugin, Maven Artpack plugin etc so we'll be looking at one after the other and then we'll be looking at the various types of repositories like local central and remote repository available with maven and then we'll be looking up uh, uh, a simple project maven project creation and look at the how the structure of the project is defined and created and then we'll follow up with uh, the quick reference guides that are available with maven which discusses all the things in brief so let's get into the discussion. So here is a brief introduction to any build automation tool. So what basically a build automation tool, any build automation tool does and what the Maven, uh, what the Maven, uh, when compared to Maven, what all other build automation tools that are available and what Maven does, does the Maven covers all these things that any build automation tool is expected to do. Yes. Basically, while building up any software project, typically the basic tasks that are available are like the dependencies, the dependency management, uh, like putting out the jar files in the class path and compiling the resources and then converting them into binary files and then running the test, packaging the compiled code into artifact and deploy it into a particular area uh, in the form of uh, the packaging that is available in jar or where or chip files and then deploying these artifacts to the application store repository. This is what is expected from any build automation tool, any build tool. So Maven does all these things first. So why we need to follow Maven? Why not Ant? In Ant build.xml file, we configure these things manually. So there is always a risk. There is always a tendency for the humans to make mistakes, make some errors, which can be avoided using Maven. So Maven has a set of, uh, set of tags that are available. This is beautifully defined, and using those tags, we can configure all the things which Maven tag. Um, the rest of the things will be taken care of Maven. So Maven automates all the things. So this is the purpose why people go for Maven. So next, let's look into Maven project structure and why we do require a project structure. So basically, if you follow up a particular project structure, in the sense that we are describing that the compiled files, where should the compiled file resides, where should the resources resides, where should the source file resides. So all these configurations we are making up as a part of this project structure. So based on that, all the all the source files that are being created, that will be located in the particular area, particular folder, and all the test source files uh, will be located in a separate folder. So these all things are basically configured as a part of 
actionable file form dot actionable file so based on the project if it is a web project if it is a if it is a project so the configuration of the project structure will be different so based on the project type the project structure varies so that's what the basic project structure of maven is used to define so how do we uh, get this project structure what is the plugin that is used for so the basically basically the plugin that is used for configuring or for defining this project structure is the arc type plugin arc type plugin is the is basically like uh, the templates that are already been defined or designed and that based on the uh, type of project structure we require we uh, the arc type plugin is used to trigger those project structure and it is used to Uh, build up that project structure for us based on the arc type selected so arc type is a plugin that is used to define the project structure for the maven based on the project type selected so we can see over here maven use a convention for the project folder structure it we follow that we don't need to describe in the configuration settings what is located where as i already told example source files need to be located in source folder and then the compiled files located in the test folder uh, in the in exif folder and then the rest source files should be located in the test folder test source folder etc these all configurations are not required to be configured manually so this is taken care of taken care by maven project structure so maven knows where to pick up uh, the source files where to pick up the test case etc so this is all done using the arc plan arc type plugin So, what is the Maven tool? So, Maven is basically a build automation tool and is used primarily for Java projects. It addresses two aspects of building software. First, is it describes how the software is built, and second, it describes its dependencies. So, the Maven project is hosted by the, as you already know, it's by Apache Software Foundation, and then Maven is, uh, Maven is basically used to define the project structure, dependencies, build, and test management. So this is all done using the form dot xml file. The configuration file which is available with Maven, Maven reads through this file and does all the other parts. You can configure the dependencies needed for building the testing, running the code. Maven automatically downloads the necessary files from the repository while building the project. So this is basically what the Maven tool does. So as I already discussed, so what the Maven tool does, let's have a quick recap of this: compilation of the source code, running the test cases, unit test and functional tests. and then package in the test results into char file var file extra based on the packaging uh, packaging format that is required and then upload the package to the remote repository so this is what maven does in brief so as already discussed an arc type plugin what is the arc type in maven it is a plugin so basically arc type in maven is a project templating toolkit the plugin that is used for defining the project structure the pattern of the project on the pattern of the model the project should be defined or created based on the arc type that is selected so the name fits as we are trying to provide a system that provides a consistent means of generating maven projects arc type is a maven plugin as i already discussed whose task is to create a project structure as per its template so if you are choosing uh, web application template we need to define the project structure in such a way that it suits the web application project so that is where basically arc type comes into play so uh, what are artifact id in the group id so basically these are all the configurations everywhere we use the artifact id and group id so we need to understand what is artifact id and group id before defining them in my mind <coughs> an artifact id is a file it's like the output that is obtained like usually a jar or the packaging format which we queue based on that the artifact is produced so that artifact can be utilized in somewhere else as a part of another major project so artifact is outcome of the build so as we as it is defined over here you can see an artifact is a file usually a jar that gets deployed to a maven repository A Maven build produces one or more artifacts such as a compiled jar 
and the source jar. Each artifact has a group ID that is reverse domain name usually. Like example, Apache is having a lot of projects. Okay, so Apache is a company that is using that is uh, creating all these projects. So the artifact, uh, the group ID is the reverse domain name of the company. For example, opt Apache. And an artifact ID is the project name that is going to be like Maven is a project for under Apache company. So of that Apache is the group ID and artifact ID is Maven. And a version string is used to define which version of the artifact that is going to get created. So what are the naming conventions? As we already discussed earlier, group ID uniquely identifies your project across all projects. An artifact ID, a group ID must follow the Java uh, packaging naming rules, as I already told, uh, it's a reverse to my name of the company. And then the artifact ID is basically that used to define uniquely the project across all the projects that the company is devising. So let's, uh, let's discuss what are the noun profiles. As I already told, a profile is basically a set of configuration values that is defined for a particular environment. So these configuration values define what task that needs to be performed on a particular environment when a build is executed for a particular profile. By using profiles, you can customize the build for different environments such as production test or deployment. So build profiles are of three types basically. They are per project, per user, and global. And let's see the basic uh, form to XML file structure. So what are the um, available tags that are available in form to XML file? So profiles, bell, plugins, dependencies, etc. So this will be looking at the last in the reference references, uh, references part where we are going to uh, go through the Maven site website and then we are going to go through the complete Maven parent form and, uh, and verify all the tags that are available over there as a part of form. And then watch form and the rules of it in Maven or any Selenium project or any automation project or any project. Basically, a project object model is a fundamental unit of work in Maven. It is an XML file, as I already told, it's a configuration of file that contains all the information related to the project. And what the Maven should do, it defines. So Maven, builds the project based on this configuration file. So when it is building the project, executing a task, it looks, Maven looks for this form.xml file in the directory structure. So the form.xml file contains the information of the project and the configuration information for the Maven to build the project, such as dependencies, build directory, source directory, test source directory, plugins, calls, etc. Maven reads the form.xml file and executes the calls and this file will contain all the instructions which we wanted to do. Maven reads this project file, verifies the resources, compiles the test, packages the test into a chart file. So this is what basically Maven does. Form contains some of the following configuration information like project dependencies, plugins, goals, build profiles, project version, developers, mailing list, etc. And then let's see what's the importance of form.xml in automation. So this is where it defines, where we are going to define the testing.xml file to be triggered using the SureFi plugin. So SureFi plugin is used for running the tests. So in the SureFi plugin structure, in the tags we will be defining the testng.xml file that is, uh, which needs to be triggered which needs to be executed. All the tests in the testng.xml file will be called using the SureFi plugin of the Maven. So Maven reads the form of the XML file and it locates where the testng.xml file is located and that is run by the SureFi plugin. The SureFi plugin is used by executing the test unit tests or the functional tests. So, we can see over here, Maven provides support for managing the full life cycle of the test project. Maven is used to define project structure, as we already discussed. Uh, and then 
download all the dependencies, build the project, and use for test management, which is used for running or executing the tests. So what is Maven dependency? Basically, dependency management is a core feature of Maven. Managing dependencies for single project is easy. Maven helps us creating, in defining, creating, and maintaining reproducible builds with well-defined class paths and library versions. So basically, Maven dependencies are nothing but those dependencies of the JAR files that are required for building up any project. So for example, when you're going with a Selenium project, we require the JAR files like uh, Selenium JAR, JAR, Selenium JAR files, then TestNG JAR files, and then oh, if there are any reporting action reports, then action reports are JAR files. So all these APIs are required for that to be configured. So these are configured based on the dependency. Dependency consists of four uh, tags where you can see like the group ID, artifact ID, and the following with version. So this depends uh, the dependency based on the configuring of these uh, four tags. So these tags are used for the downloading particular version of the APIs, particular version of the libraries of the channel files into the project. So what are Maven plugins? Maven plugins are nothing but the tasks. At a high level, it is a model file that defines uh, that defines the methods with a particular set of tasks that needs to be executed. So plugin is used to execute a certain phase where the phase consists of, in turn, the phase consists of a collection of goals. The goals are nothing but the tasks. So what are, why are the plugins used basically? So Maven plugins are basically used to create char file or var file or compile the codes, compile the unit test codes uh, and execute it and then create the project documentation and deploy them into a repository. So this is what the plugins are used for. So these are the various tasks that we can do. Those are done by the plugins. So the plugins is not used for doing a single task, but it is used for, for doing life cycle of tasks, but a phase of tasks, but it's a collection of goals, collection of tasks that needs to be performed or managed by plugin. So Maya provides following two plugins, build plugins and the reporting plugins. So what build plugins does? They're used for executing during the build cycle and should be configured in the build tag. And reporting plugins should be configured in the reporting tag and they're used for executing during the site generation. And what are the manage show file plugin and fail safe plugin and compile plugin does? As we already discussed, show file plugin is used for executing the test in the build life cycle. And Maven Show Power Plugin, uh, Fail Safe Plugin is used for re executing the failed test cases, the failed unit tests. And then, what is the Maven Compiler Plugin? This Maven Compiler Plugin is used for compiling the source files to the binary files using, uh, uh, using the configured SDK or, or configured development kit, like uh, JDK, J Java 1.6 Compiler Plugin. Java 1.6 uh, we need to use and we need to compile. So we will be configuring Java 1.6. So it compiles using the Java 1.6. So on the source files are compile using Java 1.6 and it will be converted into binary files and be placed in a particular folder. So this is what Maven compiler plugin is used. And what is Maven lifecycle? Maven lifecycle is a set of defined phases. So it defines the order in which the task should be executed. So typically, we have some tasks like uh, the goals or phases. We have compiler phase, test phase, package, install, deploy. So each and every phase consists of multiples of goals. So deploy, if you go to deploy phase, it consists of compile, test, package, install, and finally the deploy. So deploy the last phase. If we give the Maven deploy as a command, then it does all the life cycles starting from compile to deploy. So what are the basic build life cycles that are available? Clean, default, and site. Clean is used for cleaning up all the artifacts created by the previous build. That is the target folder will be deleted. And then default. Default or the build, uh, build phase is used for building the plans, building the project. And site is used for building the project and then generating the site documentation for the project. 
So as we already discussed what is the MAML goal, MAML goal is nothing but a specific task. It contributes to building and management of the project. It may be bound to zero or more build phases. A goal is not bound to any build phase. Could be executed independently outside the build life cycle also. Uh, we can look at an analogy. Plugin is like a class and goals are the methods that are defined in the class. MAML is based around the central concept of build life cycle. So what are the MAML repository and what are the types of MAML repositories that are available? Repository is something place where we are going to store the artifacts. So build artifact means the dependent files, the jar files, and the build outcome, the packaging, the package phase. So what is the local repository? Maven repository. Maven local repository is a structure of the project that is on our local system that is used for storing these artifacts. And what is the Maven central repository? It is a central place where the Maven community maintains, where all the interested developers come up with all the plugins that are available, that are created, the libraries are created, and then the place of those libraries into Maven community, from where we all download those libraries from. So the central place, as you can see, it is this URL, HTTP, repo1, Maven org, org slash maven2. So this is a central repository that the community is maintaining where all the collaborators are collaborating and placing their libraries into that. So remote repository. So remote repository is something if there is a, when, maven, when we have configured a particular library in maven in the dependencies structure, maven first will look up into the local repository. If it is not available in the local repository, goes for the central repository. If it is not available in the central repository even, then Maven will define, Maven will look for if there is any remote repository configuration available in the part of the form.xml file configuration file. If that is available, then Maven will go to the remote repository and download those files. So this is the concept of repositories. So how to get a particular dependency in Maven? So how to configure this dependency in Maven? So let's look at it. So assume like I need to define Selenium Maven dependency. Just type in Google Maven Selenium Java. So once you type it, we are already to You can see over here, mavenrepository.com equals to, and then in here you can just click on the latest version. So you can see over here dependency tag. It contains the group ID org.selenium.hq.selenium, and then the artifact ID is selenium.java. So this is the project name. Selenium Java, Selenium C Sharp, Selenium JavaScript, etc. So we need to copy this and place it in the form.xml file under the dependency stack. So this is how we configure a dependency. So this is OEC. And next, let's see how to create a simple Maven project before that. Let's go into the Quick References Guide that are available as a part of Maven. Whatever we discussed till now is available as a part of Maven main site. You can see they are given some guides where you can have a Quick Reference like Maven in 5 minutes, Maven in 30 minutes, etc. So let's see those guides which are available as a part of Maven main site. Let's see. So Apache has given a very good documentation for Maven project. You can see in Maven in five minutes it defines everything. What are the prerequisites? How to install the Maven and configure the Maven enabling, and then how to create a Maven project as we have already defined. Archetype plugin used for generating the project template for us. So this is using the uh, command line 
and we can we will be looking at into how to deal with the eclipse eclipse diamond plugin and then generating the simple project structure using the art tag. So this is the project the basic project structure standard project structure of the Maven that is getting to get created using the art tag. And then this is a pom.xml file which I try to explain in brief. And then building the project, um, here you have defined the Maven package pipe cycle. And Maven package life cycle defines all these pieces, all these goals validate, generate sources, process sources, generate resources, project resources, compile, etc. So, that's the basic idea. It's a basic overview which can be obtained in 5 minutes. So, it defines like, you can learn Maven in 5 minutes using this guide, this simple guide. So, next we can see Maven index. If you wanted to refer the index of Maven, this is a particular index that has Maven has given a documentation with everything, with indications to each and everything, like the build map cycle, POM, profiles, repositories, plugins, sites, archetypes, repositories, guides, etc. So everything is beautifully defined over here. If you don't understand anything from my session, you can just go through all these things one after the other. It's very really clear. And then they are also given a Maven reference card. So how to invoke a Maven plugin so, and then creating a Maven project, creating a new project, var project, char project. So everything was clearly given over here also. So we had defined what is the purpose of each and every folder. So what is the directory and what is the di purpose of the directory. So you can see over here, form.xml file is a Maven project file to use the configuration for the Maven project structure. And then the source file used for defining the sources. So this is the basic things, everything, each and every directory and its description is clearly present to over here in this reference card. If you want the form.xml file for compiling and running the unit is, so this is the form.xml file that you can follow. And everything clearly we got mentioned. Adding developers, setting the compiler versions, assemblies and profiles, creating assemblies. Everything was clearly for, uh, clearly presented over the year. How to build, how to use the profiles. We can just copy of uh, the form.xml file into these into the form.xml file and we can start practicing more. And now let's see the rest of the things. So understanding form.xml file. So if you're not defining anything in the form.xml file, it basically inherits from the parent form. The parent form contains all these things. So let me just go with the form.xml file. So this is the sofa form. As you can see here, it's similar to inheritance concept in the form.xml file. So if you are not defining something that is taken from the parent.xml file, what we are doing basically is we are going to override these configurations in our form.xml file that we are configuring in our project. So what we are basically doing, uh, what we are configuring, what are the configurations we are doing, those are overriding these settings, these configurations in the super form. So we are basically overriding the configurations that have already been defined in the super form using our pom.xml file that is located in our project structure. So you can see, these are the various tags that, that can be configured in a form.xml file. 
So you can see the reject uh, the repositories. You can define the central repositories from where we need to get the uh, dependencies from. And then you can see the build tag. Build tag consists of as we are already told, it already uh, defined first the basic structure, the where the target folders will be there, where the classes which are built, uh, where the binaries which are built should be placed, where the uh, binaries that are built, uh, where the binaries that are uh, built for the source files need to be placed, so where the test files uh, binaries need to be placed, extra everything is clearly defined over here. So if we see these things, we can try to uh, we can basically understand uh, after compilation of the tests, we can see where the particular binaries have been placed using this super form. And we can see here what are the different plugins available: assembly plugin, Maven dependency plugin, release plugin, and human plugin, and some other plugins also like the Surefire plugin for uh, running the tests, executing tests, compiling. Compiler plugin, etc. And we can see the reporting folder where it plays, where it gets placed. The reporting output directory is the side directory under the test output project, output directory. And how to configure the profiles is clearly defined over here. So this is the basic uh, the basic super form structure. So from this, basically, we can understand where the configuration, uh, this configuration file that defines which should be placed at what place, and uh, the different types of plugins which are available. We can extend this thing using the inheritance concept in our basic form.xml file, which is located in our particular project structure. So this is the quick reference which I want to uh, which I want to basically mention. So this is this entire things are defined clearly in the Maven site. So everything is mentioned in the Maven site. You can clearly we can get a very clear idea by going through this Maven site itself. We don't require any assistance, outside assistance. We can just require we can just go through the Maven site and we can be clarified on everything. Now let's see how to build how to configure and how to validate whether the plugin has been installed as a part of Eclipse or not. So where to view whether the plugin has been installed or not. So just go through, go to Windows and then Preferences. The Preferences, you can see Maven. So if it's located, the Maven plugin is installed first. So basically, with the latest version of the Eclipse, Maven is automatically built into Maven plugin is automatically built into the Eclipse. So we don't need to actually configure the Eclipse plugin, so Maven plugin into Eclipse. Suppose this. Now let's try to create a simple Maven project using the archive. So it's very easy when going with the clips. So what we need to do, navigate to file menu, new. This. And then select Maven. Maven project. Click on next. Create a simple Maven project. Check checkbox, create a simple Maven project. Or else if you wanted to create using the arc type, if you know you can configure everything. And then so if you're not checking that, you can select the type of art type. So if you know what type of project you wanted to build up. You can just select if it's a web app, you can select this art type. So we are doing a quick start for Maven. So we are selecting quick start Maven project structure. So we are selecting this particular art type. So let's get back and select the checkbox and click next. And as I already defined, the group ID is pertaining to the organization. 
which is building up the projects. So it is the famous domain name of the organization. Example of dot overcome dot organization name. Okay. And then artifact is a project that is uniquely defined in the organization. Example XYZ organization is building so many projects. So what is the project name that is that it uniquely defines that particular project? So this is the project name. So in our automation framework, so we can define like a group ID is a client name for whom we are creating this project for. And then artifact ID is a project name for which we are automating for. And then the snapshot the version and how we want it to get it packaged in the jar file or in the bar file that we are going to define over here. So we are going to package it in the form of bar file. So in jar file. And then click on finish. That's it. The basic cube start Maven project is created. So Maven architect again has created project structure, basic project structure, my own project for us. So basically you can see over here, it consists of my own source files with Java and then resources, test folder, test resources, where to place the libraries, where to place the compile libraries. Here the source file libraries, here the source file compile uh, binaries and uh, this is a folder where the test source files are compiled and placed into and target folder is where the output all the results all the artifacts will be placed to and the site uh, will get created under this particular target folder and form XML file so this is how it was defined in the form of the single file. If you wanted to reutilize this project somewhere else in another project, so there we are going to define in the dependencies the group ID, artifact ID, and the version name, version number. So if we define those things, or we take up these things and define it over there, and we give up this particular part where we have placed this particular artifact, automatically Maven will locate this artifact and it will be utilizing as a part of which dependencies into another project. So basically, we'll be looking at the format XML file in detail in the next session. So thank you guys. Thanks for watching.